There's like dogs and birds outside, just like yelling. I'm trying to make a video. Hey guys, it's George. I'm gonna make this like qu quick update video uh, just because I needed to say a few things, wrap up for uh, the finale for the season, me as an editor and host, and then also give you guys a few things to look forward to in the future with interviews, you know, post finale content. Um, for starters, I just needed to say thank you. I, I cannot believe all the support I've been given throughout this entire endeavor from the first episode, before the episode even came out, when we were in pre-production for this thing. Um, the amount of support just in, in every facet has been crazy. Random, you know, people I see on the street on at the University of Michigan campus being like, are you are you that George guy from, from friends I haven't talked to since like middle school being like, hey, it's me, Joe, from from science class. I, I love Survivor, great show. Um, to even just like, to you guys, the most important people, the, the fans, the, the people who are you know, potential fans or not fans of the real show and have come here to like seek some additional content. Thank you so much for for coming out here and watching this, you know, whether you were rooting for this person or that person, thank you for just taking the time to watch something like this. Um, it means a lot to me. Uh, I, it means a lot to all of us, the cast, uh, my co-producer Claire, um, even uh, my dad and stepmom who helped me film. You saw a lot of cameos by them. Go back and check their like secret little... Anyways, uh, I can't believe this community is not only as big as it is, but as supportive as it is. Um, and, you know, it's just... I've been blown away. And that's all I can say. But enough, uh, you know, about all of my weird feeling stuff. Uh, let's get into the stuff you are all here for. Uh, which is a quick Q&A and then some announcements for what we're doing going forward. All right, first one, a, a hot question right out the gate. Did Thal and Tarowski become a thing? And if not, why not? Uh, probably the biggest question I got for the entire season was, are these guys dating? They should be dating, right? Uh, you know, then once we kind of got like Thal is thing going on, it kind of died off a little bit. But, you know, we, we were always in, you know, the Alex's ship department for sure. Sadly, no, guys. Uh, I'm sorry to say the Alex's never got together. I was there filming them when they almost kissed once, so that was a really cool experience for me to just be there, you know, flying the wall. But sadly, no, they all have their own relationships and, and things going on. So, uh, rip Alex's uh, 2017 to 2019. Okay, next up we have, what was your main worry as a host upon starting the season? Um, everything. Uh, so much. Um, it, there was just so many things that had to get done for something like this, and it was just me and my co-producer Claire doing all this, so it was a lot to deal with. But, we, you know, we wanted to do this. This was our senior year, and we were like, we gotta do something with our lives. Like, we can't just, like, go out into the real world and not have anything exciting to show for it in terms of our own fandom for, like, this show. Like, we... We had seen Maryland, Boston, Ohio State. We had seen them do this before. And we're like, we can do that. Like, we just never had the guts to do it until then. Uh, and this one season was kind of uh, our, our ode to the show and our ode to, like, all the, um, the fans. Uh, but um, if I really had to pick one specific thing that was hard, uh, besides scheduling, because that's just a boring answer. Like, scheduling is the worst when you have, like, 18 people to worry about, especially when some of them... All right, I won't call anybody out. The number one thing that I, I probably was worrying about was, will this story be good? Because I'm, you know, I'm not a CBS editing crew. I'm a one-man editing crew, and whatever I'm getting, I have, you know, whatever I'm given, I have to make something out of it. And, you know, if I'm going to get a unanimous vote every single episode, like, I, I'm scared that no one's going to watch this thing. Um, luckily, I got the best cast in the... Is there like a... Get this fuzzy... Luckily, I had the best cast in the world. I couldn't imagine anyone else being in this cast. I was so unbelievably happy with the people uh, that we picked. We had a lot to pick from, and it took a long time to do all the process of casting. And these guys came to play and came to be entertaining. Like, you know, when I was uh, at home just like listening to some of these, uh, some of this footage sent in from different confessionals or whatever, 
uh, aka Matthew, every single day, uh, I was just like, wow, like we might have something on our hands. Even when we had those few Maison tribals early on, when it was kind of like, okay, it's unanimous, there were still some really exciting things I thought were just going on that I thought I could, you know, potentially work around. And, and uh, a lot of you said those were some like of your favorite episodes, which is watching like the scavenger hunt or like Mitch being a, an idiot with the, that text. Shout out Mitch, sorry. Uh, but like, I, I was I was really worried throughout the entire thing, not even just out the gate, that, you know, something might just mess up and we, we'll get like a, a pagonging, like everyone's just going to go for one tribe or we'll get this and that. And I mean, that's just the worries of any producer or something like that. But um, it worked out in the end, uh, thankfully. All right, next. Which player exceeded your expectations the most? Cooper. 100%, hands down, it's Cooper. Um, this dude almost didn't even make the cast. Uh, he was like right on the bottom and someone last minute uh, said they had to go to study abroad. They got like accepted and so we weren't able to put them in the cast. Um, and so we put Cooper in instead. We didn't want to do like a, uh, too many relationships that already knew each other. Um, and we'll get to the Alex's in a second because I didn't even know they knew each other until a week before the premiere, but we'll get to that. Um, but we knew Cooper and Lane knew each other when we were uh, um, when we were doing the casting process, and so we're like, oh, we don't really know. And also, like Cooper with his interview, what was your favorite, you know, uh, college moment so far? One time I went outside and played, you know, snowball fight, or we were outside in the cold. I was like, oh, that's so precious. Like, so I was just like, I wonder if this guy's really chalked up, you know, to be backstabbing, do all that. And then you know, we're like, you know what? This would be a cool dynamic to have Lane and Cooper. And then Cooper just became this crazy villain strategic mastermind who just played the game with his you know his heart on his sleeve hardcore definitely exceeded our expectations i'd say also huge honorable mention to liz uh liz uh she was an ra she, we thought she'd be like this motherly type which she definitely was to a lot of people but we didn't think she would be as social as she was she was insanely good at at, at the social game no matter what anyone can say liz probably had the best like social game all around in terms of you know getting people to like them and and or getting people to like her and yeah i think liz is definitely up there too but cooper was just like baby boy no cutthroat player who will kill you in a minute talk about the process of getting survivor michigan up and running at your school and your motivation behind it yeah uh really quickly i've talked about this before but basically yeah we we me and, and Claire didn't even know each other before uh, this show, but we just had such a passion for, for Survivor and, and stuff like that, that through a mutual friend, we got together and we were like, okay, we're going to do this. And uh, we sought inspiration, obviously, from Maryland, Boston, Ohio State, like them before us. And we talked to Austin a little bit about help of getting things off the ground in terms of, hey, how should we schedule these things? And what's the best way to do this? Um, and so, yeah, it, it was just like, go, go, go. Uh, it was the summer before that semester that we started getting things to go so it was you know it was it was very fast paced it was a lot there was like a like a ranking system of like 130 applicants that we had to do so that was a lot um we had to make all the challenges beforehand you know other people like austin has talked about this a lot uh so i, I don't need to go too much in depth into it but it was like it was an adventure for sure and it really made my senior year all right uh what was the best part of being the host part of production that's a hard one. Um, I would probably say getting to know everybody on the cast, um, because that just made everything else better be when I got to know them so well. I sadly, um, how we split up the confessionals, because we have a big campus on uh, University of Michigan, um, Claire um, would do some confessionals, I would do some other ones, and we would try to swap as much as we could, but some people just live closer to other people. Um, and so I got closer to some people uh, more than others early on, but then I luckily got to know them more later. Um, but because I got to know them so well, they felt like my children in some rights, and I bet Jeff Probst feels the same way in terms of watching them play the game. Like, it, it makes everything more emotional. It makes everything like you're there with them. Um, and e even though you're seeing all these people like, you know, for example, Thal afterwards is almost like crying because he's just so invested in this game and, and he's leaving. I'm there too, like filming this. And I'm like, wow, my baby boy is like going out. Like, you know, Leia goes out with her, her you know, her her, uh, her head held high after, you know, she's eliminated. And in that moment, I'm just like, oh my God, like 
the pretzels that I, you know, put out there and she took, like, you know, I helped in this demise and I, I feel so bad. Like, and it was just like, it was a lot to take in, but also so awesome to get to know all these people. And, you know, they're all great people. So it, it, it's just, it's been great. It's been phenomenal getting to know them. Who was your winner pick entering the season? Uh, I actually recorded myself. It is never going online ever, but I recorded myself like a, like two and a half weeks into the game with my own thoughts, uh, kind of like a time capsule of just what was going on in the game, who I thought was playing, um, you know, a certain way, yada yada yada, who I thought had the best chance to win. But my first winner pick, like outright, I think it was either Mitch or Thal, um, because Mitch. Um, he came off in his interview and just like in his first confessional really really into this game and i find out later obviously everyone is super invested like in skipping classes to find an idol and stuff but mitch to me felt like out the gate really really invested because his confessional was just like all right george i have to tell you this like ah, ah. and and just as a producer i was like because he was so invested maybe he would do better um and he made it really deep in the game uh, because of that fall uh i just had an inkling that this guy potentially was going to do well at challenges, but not too good. I thought um, he definitely had like a charm about him um, that he just would like kind of gave off to people very naturally. I saw that like uh, even on day one where he's just like talking people under the shelter thing. I think Angela was was one of my early winner picks too because she she has this way of speaking about her. And I always look for something like that uh, when I think of like good players on the real show. Like if you if you really go back and look at Angel's confessionals or the way she talks to people, it's very methodical and she's very like it's kind and it's like this is so weird. I'm like in, in describing that's like li linguistics, whatever. Angela really does a good job at making you feel welcome when you're talking to her. Um, and so I thought Angela definitely was up there too. Uh, and I definitely wish I got to see more of her in the game because I think she had a lot of a lot of potential. In hindsight, if you could change anything about how you produce the show, what would it be? Thanks for an amazing season. Well, thank you, first off. Um, but how I could change anything about how you produce the show? Uh, get more people to help us out. <laughs> like, going forward after uh, this season, since I'm not the host and, and stuff like that, uh, a new crew comes in, um, which uh, I will you know, talk about more later. Uh, but a new crew comes in, and by new crew, I mean an actual crew. Like, they have a lot of producers on the show now a lot of uh dedicated people working on it and so i guess yeah hindsight 2020 probably should have got more people to help out film or do things uh and stuff like that for editing you know i was uh, a screen arts major like i want to be an editor so i you know i didn't think i needed any help for that so that was okay and by okay i mean it was uh but i'm also you know i'm just uh, thankful for the people that did get to help out. Claire and, and, and my family did a phenomenal job just with us four, us two most of the time, me and Claire. Uh, so, you know, it, it worked out, but like having more stuff like that would work. Uh, also, um, getting all of the footage would have been really good. Uh, you guys can see throughout the season, some people might have not have as many confessionals as they should have, or, you know, uh, there might be some missing footage from like a, an idol hunt or something like that. We had so much footage that uh, some of it got lost in the shuffle when we were transferring from Claire to myself, and so you know I didn't get all confessionals or all uh, footage. But I think I think it still worked out in terms of you know edits and, and all of that. So hopefully um, you guys could still enjoy it even with you know the not all, everything being there. All right, what was your favorite moment as the host? Was it hard for you to sometimes stay unbiased with contestants? As a host, I had a hard time keeping my emotions in check when I knew someone I liked was about to be voted out. Who were you sad was eliminated? Wait, is this when I'm the host? Is this like Greg or Austin or something? Anders? A anyways, uh, yes, absolutely. Like I said, like I got to know these people really well, um, and they really felt like you know a family to me, and so it was definitely really, really hard um, to keep that in check, but I obviously took my, you know, hosting duties and as a, and also as a producer very seriously. So I didn't want to, you know, uh, be too emotional about someone and, you know, give off that vibe that, you know, someone else was favored over another. Um, it was tough because, you know, you want certain characters to stay around, you know, if, you know, if you're working for CBS, you want Tony to stay around forever. You want Spencer to stay around forever in Kageyan just because they're so great for the TV. Um, 
but also yeah as as a person i definitely i think for everybody the liz vote was hard uh it was just like nobody felt <laughs> super good afterwards i think definitely i mean leia Brittany, and mitch definitely they were like wow our plan went to work uh pretty well uh the only issue was like you know everybody really liked liz a lot and so when she was voted out like her 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 confessional afterwards her like post memorum or whatever uh was really rough to film you know she was like on the verge of tears and and i was there too i was just like god like i can't watch this this is so much uh all right do you have a favorite player of the season um yeah levana no i mean i i have a lot of uh, favorite players. It's obviously hard to not be biased, um, but I. And jokes aside, Lafana was insanely fun to watch just because she had no, she had no clue about anything in the game, whether it was idols or whatever. She just really wanted to do this for the experience. She was a freshman, and it was really fun watching her play the game because I thought she'd be out like that, but she like ingrained herself into the alliance like day two, like had all of this like. It was, it was very fun to see Lavana uh, play the game. Uh, obviously, everyone past the merge was exciting to watch. Uh, I couldn't ask for a better like merge. Um, so all of those players were great as well. But God, Lavana should have won this season, shouldn't she have? Yeah. Who would have won if the final three was Mitch, Brittany, and Leia? This has been contested actually a lot. And I bet like if we had like a jury round table with like everybody, they would probably have more things to say. And it, it might have changed over the course of, you know, like a year and a half or a year. Uh, but it's really tough. I don't think Mitch wins uh, in that situation at all. I think um, most of the votes are be going towards Brittany or Leia. Um, I, I just think just based on, on what people have said to me, I think, uh, Leia gets, um, the Alex's have told me that they would probably actually be splitting their votes, um, because they, you know, think differently about specific games or social games. Uh, but basically I think the votes really come down to like what Angela, uh, Akshay and Kara are doing. Um, a few people uh, would be voting for Leia because of her strategic game and, and what they've seen her do, even though it was, it was more uh, in the backseat uh, of what's going on in terms of just like she was basically dominating a lot of the strategy, especially on Maison. Uh, but she, she and she talked about this before, but um, she wasn't really getting the credit for it because she was having Mitch go out and do the dirty work, really. Um, Brittany, on the other hand, just completely from her social game, um, a lot of people loved Britney. Uh, so many people um, loved Britney. So just from like a popularity contest, as Mitch would say, she might get the vote. So it's really a social game versus strategic game. The you know the very very good strategic game of Leia versus the very very good social game of Britney, who made actual like really good connections with the other side. Uh, you didn't really see much. Um, I mean, Leia did talk with the other side, but and she's voiced this frustration even too in some confessionals like. She didn't talk to, you know, many Neela people as much as, as she wanted to or as much as some other people like Mitch, Brittany, Liz ended up doing. Um, so, uh, yeah, I, I definitely think that'd be an interesting final three. I know there are so many to choose from, but what was your favorite tribal council you witnessed this season? God, um, three big ones stand out. You obviously got the double tribal. You have the merge. Um, and you have the Cooper vote off. Also, Liz is up there too, but that's just like so emotionally draining. It's hard to deal with. Uh, but I definitely think those three are up there. Um, God, favorite. Okay, the, the Cooper one was amazing to me just watching because Cooper interrupted me immediately and I like going into it had no clue what was going on because so many things were happening last minute. So I was just completely blindsided. There was a lot of footage of me just looking at the camera I didn't use, or I was just like, I don't know. And I had to reel them back in a lot of times. So that was really great. That was really fun. And at the end of the day, I did not see Liz not playing the idol, uh, but I'll talk to Liz about that later. Um, in terms of the merge boot, uh, that was really crazy because at that point I knew we might have something special here. Um, because walking in the tribal council, Akshay and Tarasky would be the first ones to show up, and Tarasky's like, or, uh, Akshay's like, yeah, I think I'm flipping, and I was like, 
what, it, what, which way? What do you, what? And then Trasky comes up, like, I obviously was not, I didn't actually say that out loud, <laughs> but then Trasky came up to me and was just like, uh, better watch what happens. I was just like, huh, what? <laughs> like, what is happening? Um, and so I just really like uh, last minute, like, scrambles uh, for tribals. And then that tribal itself wasn't as chaotic as the Cooper one, but the reactions were great and uh you know rip Kara, but like everything leading up to that was really really insane um it was also the first time we had like deliberations which i can't believe i said just first time there because there were so many times where people were standing up throughout the season but uh that was really fun there's a lot of footage that got cut for that but it was all kind of the same deal like nobody's flipping um so i don't know ty uh, you know also the double tribal was just great um but that was kind of two tribal, so it's kind of hard to, to say, you know, that's one tribal I really liked. Are there any chances that we will see some players from the season in future seasons? Hmm. All right, I think I've, I've taken enough of your guys' time. Uh, this was supposed to be quick, uh, but, you know, you guys had a lot of questions to ask, and I kind of wanted to wrap up a few loose ends before we get into what's happening next. So let me announce what's happening now. So I talked about this a little bit on Facebook. Uh, but going forward, we're going to be doing some interviews, some batch interviews for uh, the season. Um, I have an in-depth interview specifically with the winner of the season uh, coming up very shortly. Um, these these interviews will be kind of dropped out periodically throughout uh, the coming weeks. You know, we're kind of in the off season now, mm. uh, but in 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 terms of the off season, there'll still be content. So I'll still be posting this kind of stuff. Yeah, uh, thank you guys so much again seriously uh this was a blast to do um i'm not gonna get all sappy yet because this isn't the last you'll see of me yet but you know my days as a host are gone sadly uh in terms of an interviewer i'm still on the job uh but um thank you guys for for you know supporting the show so far uh and hopefully where it goes um i'm excited to be like just like on the outside of things now because although i know some stuff of what's going on in the future uh i've tried to avoid spoilers myself so hopefully i can you know um kind of enjoy it along with you guys going forward so look forward to these interviews uh make sure to look be on the lookout on social media for this uh, tournament kind of thing we're doing and uh i'll see you guys real soon